the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always Namaste friends in today's lecture we'll be seeing uh, you know we'll be getting deeper into this blockchain technology so this is we'll be seeing like you know what are all the different kinds of blockchain available what is an open what is a closed what is open and uh, private and open private and closed public and open public and closed and different examples for the same and also we'll be touching on the ethereum which is a digital coin right now and also what a hyperledger is so i am excited let's take a deep dive in today's lecture what we'll be seeing is what are all the types of blockchain hey, what is he talking we blockchain and what is the type of blockchain yes there is what is a public and private blockchain what is a open and closed and you guys might have actually heard of ethereum okay ethereum crypto coin okay which is like you know at the date i'm actually speaking right now it is like 1500 dollars odd and i think it went close up to 2800 dollars so with a crypto crash right now right now it's like 1500 dollars so we are going to be seeing what an ethereum is and what a hyperledger is and likewise you know the contract information always like the contract information so blockchain we have been talking time and again it is an immutable which is like immutable is nothing can be it's a transparent and tamper proof data the data cannot be changed we already talked in the previous lecture the blocks are nothing but it contains a hash of the previous network okay the previous block so the hash and hash and hash of the previous previous blocks that is how it actually joins together and that is how the train is actually coming so think in this manner you you guys should have actually seen the train right with multiple compartments so that has been one one compartment is actually connected to the other compartment right so in the similar manner the blocks are actually connected with the other block with the hash algorithm with the previous with the previous block hash uh, you know which is which is secured and you know that actually helps in identifying the blockchain is an append only so in other words the data cannot be deleted or edited only additions can be made okay it's more or less like read only the blockchain provides as i always say a detailed history of all events not only a snapshot it you know uh, last lecture i talked about the organic carrot sowing so when he actually typed in what president did it actually say like on so and so date in so and so farm president actually like you know started this organic farming in carrot and you know this is the day he actually harvested this is what he did so it will give the entire history not only the snapshot okay uh, having said that uh any individual or a group of people large group of people can actually participate in a blockchain to capture the important data because you know we all need people right for the consensus and every people should approve not everyone is going to be lying or the majority is not going to be lying the individuals who have an announcement to the group of peoples like in a supply chain they actually participate in a large group for voting because the people are there for voting and for the land titles so you know the different you know where all blockchain can be used is the land title you actually buy a land and you know you are going to register the title so instead of only the register actually telling you know sometimes the register can also be tricky you know if you have like you know thousands of people like you know watching for you then it is valid okay so say suppose i actually go for a certification like a block blockchain certification exam i can say that i cleared it but what is the proof so if many people see me clearing the exam and they say like yeah i know this guy who actually took this exam on so and so date he actually passed with so and so marks uh, you know so that is valid right because it is approved by the people like a majority of the people having said that let's actually get into you know some of the different kinds of blockchain what is a public what is a private and there is only a subtle differences between the open and closed you know in the public and private so let's actually see as i always say blockchain is only an append mode so that is like you know you can only add but not you know edit any kind of data uh, you know so this who can write the data to the blockchain public is anybody anybody can actually the public can actually come and write add the record private it's only like a closed group only certain group of people can do and that is for some reasons okay so in the public also we have like you know multiple segments we have public and closed public and open so what is a public so and closed so everybody can participate but still it's a closed like voting voting records whistle blowers okay so these are all like you know public and closed what is a public and open so which is actually open in the public right so you know which is currency betting video games okay so these are all like public and open so likewise the private also there is going to be like you know private and closed and private and open right so the private and closed is 
a construction, the national defense, which is private, but it is a closed network. Only closed network of people can actually participate. They can actually decide the configurations of a submarine or a missile. The law enforcements, military and tax returns. The private and open is uh, only few people, but like, you know, like supply chain, government fi financial records and corporate earning statements. The corporate is basically private, but when they actually announce the res results, it is private and open, right? So that is how I mean by private and open. I trust this explanation is clear. So basically it's the same thing. Okay. Public and private is who has the access, what is the speed, what is the security, what is the identity and what is the asset? So public is basically anybody, private is only few persons who has the permission to do so. The public is slower because of the amount of peers participating, private is faster. In security, in the blockchain world, which we'll be discussing sooner, we have something called as a proof of work and proof of stake. Okay, I think we also touched on this earlier uh, in one of my lectures and this is how even the cryptocurrency works. Okay, uh, the proof of work and proof of stake and we shall be covering it. In the private, it is pre-approved participants. It is not the proof of work or the proof of stake. The identity in a public is anonymous and the in private is known persons because I know only these few can actually attend. The asset is native asset uh, in public and uh, in private is any asset. Okay, so just some differences. So there's an open and close, so you know, it's the same, okay, in open, everyone can read the blockchain, the closed is only certain participants can read, it's more or less, as I said, only subtle differences between public and uh, open and closed, uh, okay, so basically this is like the solution should be permission or permissionless, okay, uh, whether all the participants are created equal or should some, you know, person should not have all the access, okay, or how do I actually say it? In a state, like if you take a country like India, you have a prime minister who has a lot of power and then you have state ministers who are chief ministers who have powers but not to the level of a prime minister. And then the hierarchy goes down also, right? So every person will be having a power but in a limited manner, okay? Not like, you know, the topmost. So we also decide whether everyone should be having the same access or whether some person should be limited. Okay. And, uh, you know, the election chairperson, you know, similar, okay, whether it's permission or permissionless. So when an election chairperson can actually add candidates on election, it is called permission. When a digital currency, which can be, a, which can be exchanged and trade, traded by all, it is called permissionless. Okay. Uh, so this is permission and permissionless. Ethereum. So there is a cryptocurrency right now. I think it is ranked number two or three. I don't know. But the time I'm speaking, it is $1,500. Okay. And I think it went up to $2,800 before it actually crashed. Okay. And Ethereum, they say like a serious competitor to Bitcoin. So we'll also be discussing the technology of one cryptocurrency as I promised earlier sometime soon. So what is also the Ethereum and Hyperledger? It has got a music and content distribution. It has got a digital currency, an asset based token is a blockchain enabled mobile data service. Wow, look at that. You can gamble and online gambling is there. Authoring, editing, amending a piece of legislation. And in this, a group of, a group consensus is needed. So it actually grows to the, you know, proof of work and proof of stake concept, which we'll be discussing, but this is what the Ethereum is. Having said that, what is this hyperledger? The hyperledger actually comes in the supply chain industry. Okay, so supply chain management, uh, inventory management, internal business, managing internal business process, processes in a geographical distributed locations, allowing elected officials to vote on initiatives without being present. Okay, so in, in, if you actually select a person, that person will actually act on your beh behalf, right? So something very similar. So this is how, just know the differences at a high level between the Ethereum and Hyperledger. Uh, and we can, you know, and if you have any questions, feel free to, you know, ask me. Having said that, if you have any questions in this lecture or if you feel I can be of help to you in your career or, you know, any kind of process, you know, any kind of, you know, mentorship, feel free to add me and follow me in LinkedIn and also follow my blog spot. I'll be very happy to answer any of your questions. Till we see you next time. Take care. Thank you. 
I must say friends, I trust you have actually enjoyed my lecture. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me in, my, in the LinkedIn or follow my blog spot. I'll be, you know, very happy to help you, uh, you know, to clarify any questions to the best of my abilities. I would like to thank two persons. One is you for giving me your golden time. The other is my wife Jayashree for allowing me to follow this passion. Till we see you next time. Take care. Cheers. Bye.